We are uh, quite blessed to have Amy Knopfel here to talk specifically about early childhood education and a wonderful spreadsheet that you have and the finances of early childhood. This is just to kind of give you an example of what it would look like. Um, and, but it's it's kind of cool because um, if you're not a finance person, it's like budgeting for dummies. I love it. So, so here you go. It gives you the instructions. The first tab here right at the bottom says instructions. So fill in the colored boxes only. And he's password protected the white column. So you can't really mess it up unless you, and if you want to change them, you have that option as well. You can type in the one, two, three, four password and change the, uh, the formulas if you would like i would not like but but you can and if you mess it up um i think you have dropped in the the shared thing you've dropped the blank template right al we have yeah so okay. all of you have access to this so as amy goes yeah. through it and again this is an outstanding document so it truly is because there's so many nuances to child care um so i'm going to just go straight ahead from rows one and nine so we're going to go to the upper section we're going to go to the sales forecast that tab down at the bottom there and you just fill in if it goes for me there we go um so you just start dropping in your data all the all the yellow boxes are what you fill in so we have two one-year-old classrooms two two-year-old classrooms a vpk room and then again it's very specific. So our VPK program, which is voluntary pre-kindergarten in Florida, it's a state funded program, is only three hours. So we have to account for just those three hours, but then the wrap, the morning and after program of that. So then that's in there as well and what our tuition is for that. So you still you fill in the the name of the program and then the tuition there. And then that program only runs for a certain amount, like nine months of the year. So then we have, we call it another thing, force program that's in the summer because then the state doesn't pay for those three hours every day. So then we have to add in that amount of tuition there. Do you see how complicated this early childhood program is? <laughs> and so, but this spreadsheet accounts for it all. And so there you go. And so then next year we're under construction and thankfully it's nap time. So I make the construction worker stop hammering. Um, so you can't hear it right now. So we're adding on two more classrooms. So next August 1st, I've got room for two more classrooms there. So I can add that on. You can see I'm still a work in progress. So that's how those, those work. And then if you're like me, you can't remember what the instruction says. So boom, we go back to instructions. <laughs> this is how I roll. And then, um, so next go to the second cab tab, the pay calculator. Oh, I forgot tuition calculator. What did, um, what did he say? He loves any, any type of calculator in the, the meeting prior to this. So well, there's a, there's a tuition calculator right there on one of those tabs at the bottom. So you can see your tuition calculator is right there if you need to use that as well. So this is for classrooms that may have different types of tuition directly in the classroom. So maybe you give a discount um, maybe some of your children have financial aid. You can drop that into here and come up with the different tuitions and it calculates it for you with the formulas. You don't have to do that. Um, all of our tuition is the same. We don't have any discounts because we have state funding, um, but it all ends up being the same. So we didn't have to use that because in the end, we're getting the same amount of money for every child. So back to the instructions, you go to the second tab, the pay calculator there. Um, so here it gets a little tricky. This is where we spent so much time. I got to scroll up to the top for all of our classrooms because um, now it's all relative. Pay is a little less down south than it was up north when I was in Chicago. Uh, our center is open from 630 to 6 and we have different rates of pay. We have lead teachers, assistant teachers, and aides, and some of them have received raises or bonuses or whatever it may be, so they're getting different rates. Well, how do you calculate that? So this is where we had to spend a little more time with George on each classroom. So in our one-year-old classroom, we actually wrote out um, and averaged what the average teacher hourly rate was. And then, um, then he would calculate, use 10% of the hourly rate for the payroll taxes, because you don't want to forget the payroll taxes, because then your budget is all off. I've learned this as well in my class. Um, and then how many hours a week you average that out and weeks per month. And we used 4.34, because um, that's the general rule. And you can adjust that because different months um, have different weeks in them. And then boom, the formula calculates it all out for you. Um, so one year, two one year old classes. This took actually a lot of time. So, so again, it seems a little overwhelming, but if you just kind of take your time and go through that, work out what the averages are, 
you can go all the way through and we've left a little room. I clearly haven't finished this because we'll have some more classrooms here that I'll need to work out. Um, then it calculates it and the formulas bring it all back to the final page. Um, so then I have to go back to the instructions because I'm like, what do I do next on this big old spreadsheet, this forecast? Um, so then you go back to the lower section, first tab sales forecasting, number 20, uh, row 23 on. So here we are. And so also, if you we are in a calendar year budget, so I'm going to have to adjust this. When we worked with George, he had it set up this way. We said, just do it, get it through. We'll tweak it when we can. But if you're on fiscal year, you start in August, here you go. It's already set for you or July, whatever it would be. You can adjust these however you would like. Um, if you're predicting enrollment, here's where you put it in. We're full with wait lists, so we know we're going to be full. And so we were able to easily predict our enrollment uh, for this year. So here's where you drop in your enrollment per month. And then everything else has kind of been put in for you because the formulas are there, boom, <laughs> which is awesome when you're not a business person, but you are because you have to be. <laughs> um, any questions, please put them in the chat. I don't know that I can answer them, but I bet Al could. <laughs> right, Al? <laughs> okay, he's on mute. Um, I'm off now, yes. Okay. <laughs> this just, like I said, it's budgeting. For people that don't love to budget so yeah no this is outstanding because again it, it's plug and play so right and, and all these these forms are outstanding the categories are outstanding the color coding on it and mm -hmm. it, it's like i said before too don't let yourself get overwhelmed you know break it down uh do it in chunks as amy as you said the instructions are right there in the tab so don't be you know scared to go right. back mm -hmm. And uh, always go back to the instructions or even print the instructions out and have it sitting right next to you. Uh, That's but the an easier way to do it. Again, is it's just, it's plug and play. So you can start putting the numbers in, see the calculations come up. Uh, you have all the different categories. This is outstanding. Here's the profit and loss. So here's where you start putting in um, all of your expenses as well. And this is where we we clearly weren't accurate. <laughs> we were like, oh, I have that in front of me. And my spreadsheet from my accurate numbers have different line items. They're labeled differently. So I was kind of guessing and adding together. When I take some more time and do it, then I'll be more accurate and I won't show this awesome. Could you imagine having 136? <laughs> <laughs> that would be an awesome surplus. <laughs> yeah, keep so, that number right there, right? That's yeah, nice my board would be like, Amy, you're getting a big raise this year. But, <laughs> but <laughs> so, I, I will say this though too, uh, Amy, as you're kind of pointing out, you know, once you have this built, it's really nice because then each year after, you're just going back in and you already have it. You know, it, it's built. Right. So now you're just plugging in the new numbers, but you already know what's going on. So you have a baseline to start from. Right, exactly. And you can change any, any of this, you can change in the yellow boxes. And like um, George said, there it is. Password to unlock the worksheet is one, two, three, four. So if you want to change any of the other things, you can. And if you mess it up, you have that original. I have the original template too, but you have it in the this um, all those other places you mentioned before. <laughs> uh, shared, shared Google folder. So we have the yes. link out there in the uh, chat, uh, but we'll also put it out there on LCMS School uh, Ministry Facebook page. Man, if you are starting a new center, this would be awesome to have, like there's a starting point right here. So if you are starting a new center, if you know someone that's starting a new center, this is like, oh my goodness, here you go. You even have a, a page for it here to start the new center. So that would be key. Yeah, I would so love we'll, to I'll have this. The, uh, that's a great plug there. So the Genesis Project uh, at LCMS School Ministry, if you're planning to start an early childhood center, uh, we have it if you're starting any school at, at any level, we have that. But this will be a tool uh, that we'll definitely utilize when it comes uh, to Genesis product, uh, Project and starting a new early childhood center. Yeah. Yeah, that's about all I have. I don't really know much more other than I just punch in my numbers and I figured out um, the hardest part for us, like I said before, was this. Um, the pay calculator right there figuring out the because not every teacher gets paid the same the hour because we're hourly our teachers are hourly paid it's different from the salary like in the grade schools where their salary so you have to average out what the pay is and how to figure that part out that was a little more challenging george actually had to take a moment to figure that out and he seemed to be the genius 
So once he told us how to do it, we wrote down everything he did so that next year we'll be able to do the same thing. Um, so that's a little bit more difficult. But other than that, um, this was a pretty simple, this is the one of the easiest spreadsheets I've ever used in my life. <laughs> So I was happy to see you in Colorado and say, you've got to show, share this with everyone. So, Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's an outstanding tool. And that, that's one of the other things, too. And you're in a cohort, right, Amy? So you have early, other early childhood directors that are going through this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And utilize, utilize uh, your, your colleagues. I mean, yes. uh, the early childhood, Lutheran school early childhood directors are more collegial than any group out there. Uh, I, I mean, work together, uh, talk yeah. to one another, you get stuck, um, utilize your resources. There are people there to help you through it. And mm -hmm. just as Amy said, you, you didn't really like budgeting, you ran away from it. Uh, <laughs> what did you do to overcome that, that fear or that sense of, I just want to avoid it? Well, once it started being successful at it, then it just makes you want to do a better job of it. And mm -hmm. when you see when you see things starting to work, then you're just like, oh, this is not as hard as it looks. And um, your school is sustainable when like the data doesn't lie. Right. Like, when you have data to show moving forward, we're we came here. There were 30 some students. Now we're at 105. We're going to have 123 by next summer. Just and it's not simply because of budgeting, but having solid numbers and showing if we could do this, then you know this money's in place here. We have enough to do this. We can pay our teachers more. Just having sound numbers really does make an impact. And knowing about it, having the knowledge has has really helped us be successful here. I think that has just made me want to know more about it. I still don't think I have all of the right lingo, but, <laughs> I, but, I, but I do know about it. I just don't think I say it correctly, but I, I, I understand it a bit more. It also helps that I have some really solid board members and some church members that have come alongside me and I'm not afraid to ask questions. I'm the most resourceful person. If I don't know, I'm not afraid to ask. And um, I have one, one member uh, on our board who he says he works for a, a small non-for-profit or he was retired called the IRS. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so he comes alongside me and I ask him questions and if he doesn't know, he'll find out. So um, I've learned a lot in the last three years here and actually in the last many years, um, but especially here of how important it is to, to do a good budget, uh, to be accurate. And like you said, not to inflate numbers anywhere. I always, I always, put my expenses really high and my income lower every year just to make sure. And so I'm putting a deficit in this year, but I know I probably won't have a deficit where it's going to break even or probably have a bit of a profit next year, just because I like it that way. <laughs> I think it, it it's good that way. I don't know. What do you think about that? Uh, I think that's being fiscally responsible. I mean, that, that's definitely, you don't want to overinflate things. Uh, and, and yes, I mean, a lot of times you want to, uh, Think about your expenses at a higher level and your revenue at a at a more kind of uh, lower level or or minimum level. There, uh, and that gives you a good picture and gives you some some let's say cushion in a budget. Uh, right. So definitely, uh, when people run into issues, uh, they try to uh, underestimate their expenses and overestimate their revenue, and then you come out with a deficit. And yeah. when you come out with a deficit, that's when you scramble and you can't do yeah. what you're just talking about. You know, how, how can we raise salaries? How can we take on this project? So uh, those are the things that you want to do. And that's, as you stated, when budgeting can be fun too, because you're actually looking at real numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. You're getting real data back out. Numbers don't lie. I mean, we, we can kind of make them lie if we want to. And that's another accounting course. And, you know, <laughs> see Enron and some of these other organizations that were out there, but eventually that catches up to you and, and people find yeah. out, obviously. So uh, yeah. that's why you want uh, good information put in, gives you good information coming out. And that's really yes. what you want to see. And again, that helps you uh, with the overall mission and ministry of the school, and it helps right. guide your strategic plan and where you're going. So that's right. what you want. A spreadsheet like this that's plug and play. And uh, again, Amy, as you said, there are people out there just 
willing to help, who are, are great individuals. A lot of times they're retired people and, you know, they, they want to keep sharp. They want a little something to do. They don't want uh, to be overworked or on a schedule or whatever else, but they want to, they want to help out. Uh, right. So to find someone in your community that maybe is an accountant, someone in your church that's retired, that's a business person, and bring them alongside as a, as a little guide and say, hey, can you mentor me a little bit on this uh, whole budgeting thing? And a lot of times they'll be overjoyed. Absolutely. Sometimes they're just waiting to be asked. <laughs> that's it, right? That's, yeah. That score is nationwide. I actually have used them before when I started a center in Naperville. I reached out to the Chamber of Commerce and they had an office they used. So I just met them there, these retired guys, and they kind of did a spreadsheet similar to this, but not anywhere near this. And so that was helpful because, you know, I was a four-year-old preschool teacher and I started a center. I didn't know how to do a budget first <laughs> and a brand new center to start with. So they were very helpful. So that, if they're, I mean, they're nationwide, the score, S-C-O-R-E. So you can look those, them up to be um, a good resource for you as well. Yeah, and what a fantastic sheet right here. I mean, the spreadsheet, uh, we're way ahead of the, of the game now, right? Because uh, distributing this out and allowing people to see uh, what you have in a starting process and being able to communicate with uh, others when you get stuck, you know, how do we, how do, we do this? So fantastic. Any questions for Amy? We do have the link. Uh, in chat. So if you want to grab that, you have access to it and not seeing any questions. I mean, fantastic job of guiding us through. Uh, it's just this, so, such an easy spreadsheet. So. <laughs> it, it is. But again, you're right. I mean, that's what we want, right? We don't have a lot of time and we don't want it overcomplicated. And a lot of it is, again, just jumping in, right? I mean, you, you have to jump into it, uh, bite it off in, in chunks, you know, and yeah, you said that earlier. Will said that just take a few pieces at a time and not all at one day, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And don't let it overwhelm you because that's one of the biggest detractors of doing the budget is, is getting overwhelmed and then saying, I just want, want to go back to it. Right. Uh, and we're all educators, so we know how to introduce this to students. And we always tell them, well, just you know, little by little and progress. And it's the same thing here. Yeah, I actually look forward to my monthly updates of the finances now because we're doing pretty well. So, <laughs> and months that we don't do, I'm like, I get it now. I don't get so disappointed because I'm like, I understand it's the big picture, not just one month, but <laughs> like I'm learning. So, <laughs> well, outstanding. Thank you, Amy. I really appreciate you offering this up and offering your time, your talent. And this is a great resource. And approaching me out in Colorado mm -hmm. and making this happen. Uh, this is a huge benefit to our early childhood directors. So what a blessing to have that. And what a blessing for you to so quickly say yes, because that was only about a week ago that I said, hey, Amy, how about how about Finance Friday bonus time? And this was outstanding bonus time. 